Hello. Today I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, fish temperaments for marine aquariums. Um, one of the things that you have to take a look at when you're looking at marine fish is their temperament. Um, and just because something is listed as generally peaceful or whatever it might be doesn't mean that they can't become territorial, aggressive, or have some issues. Um, I've had several issues with uh, fish that I've added to my 36-gallon bow front over the last several months, and so I'll just talk a little bit about that. Um, I posted some short little videos of them, of the fish that I've had and removed from my tank. Uh, the first one I'll talk about with and address is the Flame Angel. Now, the Flame Angel is listed for 70 gallons minimum, so I was at a major disadvantage to start with because I put it in a 36 gallon bow front. Um, in addition to that, the Flame Angel uh, is also listed as a semi-aggressive fish, so it is known for, for being somewhat aggressive. Um, and of the Dwarf Angels, it is considered to be one that is a, generally a little bit more aggressive than some of its counterparts. Um, I uh, went ahead and added it to my tank and uh, became apparent right away that it was not a good fit for peaceful tank mates. Uh, it went straight after my purple firefish and would not let it come out of its cave for the time that I had the flame angel in the tank. Um, it also went and began, you know, nipping at the scissor tail dartfish that I have and kind of showing intimidation, hurting behavior towards the goby. Um, oddly enough, uh, a green mandra that I had at that time um, seemed to get along with it really well. It buddied up to it and everything, and the green mandarin seemed to like it and get along with it well. So for whatever reason, it liked the green mandarin fish. Go figure. Um, the final straw, though, for me, in addition to the issues with the fish, was as most people know angelfish have a tendency uh, to nip at corals, uh, and it began nipping at a couple of my uh, soft corals that I had, and so I said, all right, it's time to go. Um, it's a shame because it was a beautiful fish, um, but it just became apparent almost right off the bat, even though he's a dwarf angel that, you know, didn't exceed about three or four inches, uh, he was just too big for the tank. Um, it, it, it just it, watching him weave in and out of my live rock was almost comical. Um, so as such, uh, I had to remove him from my tank, and I cannot make the best recommendation for angelfish in a smaller size tank. Um, if you're going to do a, a, a flame angel or one of the dwarf angels and put them in a tank that's smaller than recommended, I would recommend doing it in a tank uh, fish only with live rock, uh, which will help take care of your coral issues so they won't be nipping at your corals, um, and or uh, putting them and housing them with semi-aggressive fish, uh, such as like a dotty back or a damsel or something like that. Um, because in some cases, actually, the, the flame angel can be beneficial to them. Um, they can uh, help keep them in check and just kind of keep a good balance in the tank. But they're just they're just not in a small tank with uh, generally peaceful demeanor fish uh, and timid fish. Uh, just bad combination, so don't do it. Um, the other one that I had that was a little bit of a surprise to me because they're generally considered peaceful in demeanor. Uh, I did also have a redhead salon fairy wrasse or clown fairy wrasse as they're known. Um, and uh, they have uh, generally recommended for a tank of 75 gallons or larger. So it, I was putting it in a 36 gallon, so significantly smaller than what it's used to. Um, it got, did get an unusual amount of territorial aggression from my Diamond Watchman, Gobi. Um, the goby just did not like him at all, snapped at him repeatedly on the first day that he got in. So I don't know if that's what ultimately ended up triggering it, but uh, in terms of aggression towards other fish, that actually, believe it or not, he was worse than the flame angel, which 
to me was odd just because of the fact that it's generally considered a peaceful fish. Um, he even went after my mandarin fish, which was the final straw for me because everybody got along with the mandarin. Every other fish that I had, even the flame angel, got along with the mandarin just fine. Um, so I had to get rid of it, which is a shame because, I mean, you know, the, the redhead salon fairy wrasse or clown fairy wrasse or even solar wrasse, I guess, as they're known sometimes, uh, the coloration on them is very bold, vivid, beautiful. You know, you got the blue, purple, green, and not green, but uh, uh, white underneath, uh, yellow and red. Just a cool looking fish, but yeah, I had no choice. I had to get rid of it. Um, let's see. Um, in, in terms of as I mentioned, you can also end up with situations where peaceful fish um, develop somewhat aggressive type behaviors, as mentioned with the, the extreme example with the redhead salon fairy wrasse. Um, my diamond watchman goby, I would actually say is some, because he's territorial, I would say he's actually somewhat of a semi-aggressive fish. Um, he has any new tank mate that comes in, he will give them a warning nip. Um, to be fair, as I said, though, you know, he had some bad experiences with the Flame Angel and ultimately the Redhead Salon Fairy Wrasse. Uh, he actually <laughs> chased him around the tank. But uh, this is one of the reasons why tank size and uh, general demeanor, though, are really important when you're selecting for saltwater fish. Um, their personalities, the amount of space they require, is significantly different than freshwater. <coughs> the, um, so you want to make sure of that when you keep that in mind. You also want to make sure that if you do decide to go with a tank that's smaller than recommended on the majority of websites, you need to be prepared. It's more likely to cause aggression because they're going to feel more cramped and so become maybe a little more agitated as it were um, with some of their tank mates. So these are some of the things to keep in mind when selecting saltwater fish. Um, and hopefully you can learn from some of the mistakes the rest of us have made so you don't have to repeat them yourselves. But uh, that's it for this and uh, thanks for watching.